Significant political and social upheavals engulf Laos, Vietnam, and Cambodia in the 20th century, beginning with the adverse effects of the Second World War and subsequent defeat of the French by the Vietnamese in 1954. Communism was on the move and was rapidly spreading throughout the region. This led to considerable resistance by forces within these countries and by the United States, which supported their fight for freedom. In January 1973, the Vietnam War officially ended and by March the United States had pulled out all of its troops. Afterwards, the region further destabilized with final communist victories in Laos and Cambodia in 1975. As a consequence of these massive political changes, hundreds of thousands fled by land or sea from these countries. The exit routes along main roads and through jungles were dangerous. Many were taken prisoner, killed, or died from hunger. Landmines were especially treacherous. Fortunately, nearby Thailand, a constitutional monarchy, steadfastly resisted communistic expansion and was willing to accept thousands of the refugees into camps pending more suitable relocation. Logistic problems of caring for so many inevitably occurred. It often took years to process requests for political asylum. Eventually, many countries, especially the United States, assisted in the repatriation of these displaced persons. Also, numerous Vietnamese and other refugees called boat people perilously fled in rickety boats to find an uncertain asylum in nearby Thailand or further away in Malaysia, Indonesia, Hong Kong, and the Philippines. What follow in this presentation are the details of two-story claws, typical of the textiles Hmong women began to make when they lived as refugees in Thailand and continued to make as refugees in the United States. These were obtained at Stone Soup Fresno, an organization about whom we will have much more to say later. In the first, scenes are presented portraying more peaceful days. And in the second, Hmong refugees are shown fleeing from their oppressors by perilously crossing the Mekong River. Speak of the Mekong River to the Hmong and they will tell you the universal story. They or someone they knew fought against the currents of the Mekong for their life and for their freedom. After the Vietnam War ended, families braved the dangers of the jungles for months and years to seek freedom. Forked between communist Laos and Thailand as a passport to America, the Mekong determined the Hmong destiny. The details of these story clause serve as a backdrop to a discussion of the Hmong, an ethnic group who lived in the peaceful highlands of northern Laos. They were a culturally close-knit people who subsequently became fierce combatants on behalf of freedom and in the 1960s and 70s, Hmong troops, recruited and trained by the United States Central Intelligence Agency, became the front line of defense, holding back advancing communists until the Laotian capitulation to communism in 1975. After the end of the American occupation in Laos, 
the Hmong were left behind with broken promises and persecution by communists. The Hmong did not fare well, and though some remained to fight, most realized that they had no choice but to flee and did so to refugee camps located in Thailand, where the living conditions were very harsh. Eventually, over 300,000 Hmong were repatriated to nations that had sent forces to fight in Indochina after the Second World War. Many of the Hmong political refugees were accepted by an especially grateful United States. The largest number settled in California, Wisconsin, and Minnesota. Many came to the Fresno, California area either initially or relocated there. Interestingly, the Hmong had no written language until the early 20th century. However, the most popular and widely used was not devised until the 1950s when missionary linguists in Laos originated a system based on the ordinary letters of the Roman alphabet. Now, along with the spoken language, it is an important part of the Hmong cultural heritage, which also includes an emphasis on making traditional articles of clothing and on the arts of basket weaving, storytelling, dance, and the celebration of holidays, such as the Hmong New Year. Hmong music is played enthusiastically on many occasions by using an ancient mouth organ made of six bamboo pipes embedded in a wooden wind chest. This music holds a special place in important rituals associated with weddings and funerals, as well as during the New Year. Many charitable organizations have been responsible for giving assistance to the various ethnic groups that have settled throughout the United States. One of these in Fresno, California, called Stone Soup Fresno, takes its name from a folktale in which everyone shares a little to build a better community for all. Stone Soup Fresno is a public benefit nonprofit organization that was founded by Kathleen Garabed in 1992 in response to the difficult economic and social conditions which had developed in the four square block area of Fresno's El Dorado Park neighborhood then known as Sin City. Many Southeast Asian refugee families had settled here, but unfortunately, relationships among these family members had been disintegrating. One reason was that authority among the refugees was shifting dramatically to the children, who had rapidly gained a grasp of the English language, whereas their parents had not. Thus, children became translators, negotiators, brokers, and navigators for their family in America. Further, traditional reticence in most Asian families to share small talk widened the gap. These factors resulted in the loss of mutual respect. The children became largely unaware of or could not appreciate the significance of their parents' former life. As a result, many of the youth drifted and some became active in gangs between whom street warfare erupted. The situation became intolerable, and it was with a desire to help alleviate such deplorable conditions that Stone Soup Fresno was created. Since then, the organization has been successfully working with thousands of Southeast Asian refugees from Laos, Cambodia, Vietnam, especially with Hmong families and with an increasing number of Hispanics. With partners, Stone Soup has evolved mutually beneficial multicultural programs for children and parents, assisted by dedicated volunteers, which target literacy, health, education, and economic development. Day-to-day -day activities designed to counter poverty and to reduce violent and criminal behavior have been successful. Teens have developed more confidence and have assumed roles of leadership. As a result, families have more readily understood generational differences and have developed new appreciations of old traditions and of new opportunities. Thus, cultures have come together with greater consensus. Stone Soup Fresno also sponsors an Asian Link Center to assist other small nonprofit organizations serving local Asian residents, and a collector's art store which features authentic Hmong cultural arts. The Refugee Mural, sponsored by Stone Soup Fresno, was created by children whose self-portraits are also proudly displayed. You are now viewing these, and then you will see photos made while the work of art was being created. 
The mural, about 400 feet in length and 5 feet 8 inches tall, was painted on a divider wall adjacent to the Stone Soup facility at 1345 East Bulldog Lane in Fresno, California. It was produced between 1996 and 1999. It is an example of a mutually beneficial program conceived and designed to be a means of creating an articulation among first generation in American Hmong, Laotian, Cambodian, and Vietnamese youth and their family members. As part of the process of creating the mural, conversation between children and their families was integrated with a summer youth employment project. The project was funded by the Workforce Development Board and Bonner Foundation, creating an income for the youth that also benefited the entire family. Four groups, each consisting of six high school Southeast Asia refugee youth and a refugee college age supervisor of similar ethnic origin, were teamed cross-culturally so that each team had representatives from all the Southeast Asia cultures. Thus, there could develop an appreciation of the commonality of stories from other cultures. The teams were given intensive training and communication skills, and they were taken on a trip, facilitated by Dr. Paulette Fleming, a professor from Fresno State University, to view other murals in the Fresno area. Then the staff was sent off to collect stories from their families based on the following four questions. What was family life like in the good days before the war? What happened to our family during the war? What happened to our family when we arrived in America? What is the future for our family? After the interviews, each person shared his story with his team and with the entire group so that everyone knew the stories. Then, under the direction of Barbara Marcella, a talented and generous local artist volunteer, common design elements were identified. Stories and available pictures were analyzed and transfers were made to butcher paper scrolls representing sections of the wall. These scrolls were one-third the size of the wall and each had a continuous theme, with four themes in all. After primer had been put on the entire surface of the wall, grids were carefully marked on the wall to correspond to similar ones on the scrolls to allow for ease of transfer in proper proportion. Once the designs had been transferred, the time-consuming painting stage was begun. The project was initiated with 30 people and ended with 122 working to complete it. The artistic beauty of the end result and its effect on the community could not be anticipated because Kathleen Garibed and her team at Stone Soup Fresno had been warned that the project was doomed to fail, that it would be destroyed by graffiti and that an ethnic mixture could never work together. In fact, not only was the outcome a beautiful and poignant work of art unmarked by graffiti to this day, but it also has become a revered community reminder of their multicultural survival. Now, let us begin the story of the Stone Soup Fresno Refugee Mural. First, let's look at the entire mural. As you can see, it runs down a wall adjacent to a long driveway. The stone soup buildings, which are out of view, are just to the right of the parking spaces. Our close-up journey begins with attractive color patterns which belong to the Pan Dao, or flowery cloth, needlework of the Hmong. This needlework plays an important role in the Hmong culture as it reflects their spirit of love, friendship, and shared experiences of the past, present, and dreams for the future. Traditionally, it is worn by all ages, especially during the New Year's celebration. A multicultural Buddha then appears situated in an attractive jungle-style environment. Though Buddhism is a predominant religion, not all refugee groups share in its beliefs. The Hmong, for example, often practice a religion which focuses on animism, which is the cohesive effect of the innate soul, also on shamanism, ancestor worship, and conjured healing derived from an integrated system of medicine and spiritualism. The elephant is a common animal in Southeast Asia. This portion of the mural is from a Laotian folk tale. The fairy in the tree was believed to live in and watch over the area. 
Symbolically, the individual riding the elephant is tossing out coins of good fortune. This scene is representative of more peaceful times when children could play without fear of reprisal. Another religious reminder is the Cambodian Buddha. Then there are other peaceful moments with a farmer in his field and the tranquil memory of a lake with a characteristically small Laotian village in the foreground. A Hmong settlement in the background is also visible. These agrarian people customarily practice slash-and-burn techniques until forced to abandon their farms and farming customs by communist oppressors. The two individuals in the foreground are Mong, with the gentleman trying to impress a young woman with his flute performance. This is a traditional courtship practice. Then is an enclosure with animals which represent a multicultural bullfighting event held on special occasions. Next, in front of a revered Cambodian temple called Angkor Wat, is a Hmong adult female, and to her left are heavenly angels, who danced for the royals. The temple, which is seen in the distant background, has been a spectacular attraction for tourists visiting Cambodia. The word Angkor is used to designate the period of the Khmer Empire, which lasted between 802 and 1432 AD, and Wat means temple. This was a Hindu temple until taken over by the Buddhists after the end of the Angkor period 800 years ago. It is the best preserved in a huge complex of temples which were built between the 9th and 12th centuries. The scene following Angkor Wat is of an old Cambodian temple in a jungle. The boy near the temple signifies how much religion and the life of the people have become intertwined. Note that the river, so evident here, is the Mekong. In the planning stage of the mural, the youth agreed that